The MacPro Help Desk team welcomes your suggestions for our training and reference materials. Please contact us with your feedback and comments on this training or if you need other MacPro assistance. You may contact us via email at macpro underscore helpdesk at cms.hhs.gov or by phone at 301-547-4688. Once the state has a state profile, the state editor can create the submission package. The state editor will create the submission package and enter information into the submission forms and reviewable units, or RUs, which again are the sections within the state plan amendment. The state editor begins this process by selecting Create Submission Package in the Actions tab. This brings them to the Submission Summary Reviewable Unit. In addition to the timeline, the Submission Summary Reviewable Unit requires many pieces of important information. One of the most complex is the Submission Type option. When creating a submission package, the state editor has the option of draft or official. Official submission should be used when a state is prepared to submit the package and start the 90-day clock. However, prior to formal submissions of an official package, states may allow CMS to view the information using the Allow CMS to View functionality in MacPro. This allows for informal feedback by CMS but it's different than the state submitting a draft submission package. Draft submissions should be used when significant feedback is required prior to starting the 90-day clock. This is most helpful for complex and multifaceted SPA submissions or a SPA proposal that the state is still developing. You can also temporarily allow CMS to view the information in the package prior to submission with this package type. It's important to note that draft or official selection can be changed at any time before the package is submitted to CMS. I would like to reiterate that even if a state selects official, they may allow CMS to view their information prior to submission in an informal manner using the Allow CMS to View functionality. So do any of our CMS representatives have any information to add regarding draft and official packages? Yes, thank you. This is Sophia again. And we really wanted to highlight how important this particular section of MacPro is. Uh, so we really wanted to ask for states to please to, uh, pay close attention to the submission type. Um, unfortunately, we have had some states submit as a draft, which the state actually intended to submit as a, an official state plan amendment. Um, and as you know, um, that has affected their implications. Uh, so we really want to highlight um, how important it is for the state to please ensure that you're checking uh, the submission type you're intending to use for an amendment. Uh, we also had, on the contrary, another state um, user who was trying to learn about macro and practice macro last week, and they intended to submit just a draft submission, but they ended up submitting an official spa. So we were already starting to track that, to start the 90-day clock, etc. Um, so we just wanted to remind um, all our state users how important this is. And then we also have two um, additional points we wanted to mention. In one of the previous slides, um, you, Annie, mentioned uh, some print functionality of state plan amendments. We know that this is a question that states have a lot, and this is an area where we have tried to do enhancements in MACPRO to meet our users' needs. Uh, so once a state plan amendment um, is approved by CMS, the state is able to pull a PDF version of that spot 
since we know the state has um, the need to uh, make that a document uh, to public stakeholders. Um, we wanted to highlight um, that we have instructions on how states can do that on the Medicaid.gov master landing page. Um, you should be able to find a document entitled Master Terrible PDF. Um, and in order to get an accurate um, version of the state plan amendment that was approved in Master, it's very important to follow those instructions. And the third point I wanted to mention briefly um, is that you also heard um, that right now um, our CMS points of contact are uploading an approval letter to Macro, um, and in the near future, we are going to be moving to automating that so that then uh, the approval notice will be coming um, created in Macro and coming out of Macro. Uh, so those are the three points uh, I wanted to highlight right now. Thank you, Annie. Great. Thanks, Sophia. So as promised, um, let's talk more about the term reviewable units. Reviewable units, or RUs, are sections within every submission package. Every submission package begins with the four or five submission forms that are required components of every new submission package. So consider these RUs as the cover page to the package that will contain the authority-specific units. The submission summary is the first. Once this is filled out, the option to navigate to other RUs becomes available, including the Medicaid state plan form. Each package will have additional RUs, which will vary in amount and name based on the program selected. In an official submission, RUs need to be validated and saved one at a time and all must be completed before the state editor can forward the package on to the SPOC. After a state editor fills out an RU, they must validate for errors and save it. If any errors exist, a message will appear in red beside the question explaining the error. This step can be tricky because at first, it can seem unclear that there are validation errors that require attention. So it's up to the user to scroll through the page and check for any of that red text. If a state editor has created an official submission package, all RUs must be completed, validated, and saved for the package to be complete. The state editor will also need to return to the submission summary form to ensure that the proposed effective dates and superseding SPA IDs are entered prior to submitting the package to the state point of contact for review. We want to highlight here, as the screenshot shows, that in order to send the package to the state point of contact for review, the state editor must take action under the Records tab. It's important to remember that states can have multiple state editors in the same authority, but multiple state editors cannot edit the package at one time. The state editor that creates the package will have the ability to edit it. So at this point in the workflow, the state editor has completed their part of the submission process. The package is sent to the state point of contact for review and edits. All right, so we're going to pause here and do another quick knowledge check and take a quiz on what we just covered. So again, I'll read the question and the options out loud and please select the answer that you think's correct and send the letter in the chat feature to the attendee named Ask Me a Question. So here's the question. Which role is not matched with the correct action? Again, not matched. A, state editor creates package. B, state editor makes updates to the package. C, state, state system administrator creates state profile. Or D, state system administrator forwards the package to the state point of contact. So the correct answer is D. 
Once the state editor has created the package, the state editor forwards the package to the SPOC for review, not the state system administrator. So as a refresher, we just discussed the SSA creating the state profile and the state editor creating and forwarding a submission package to the SPOC for reviews and edits. As pictured on this slide, the state point of contact, or SPOC, will receive an email notification that the state editor has passed the package on for their review. In addition to an email, they will also have a task to review the package in their Tasks tab. If you hold multiple roles, you will still receive this system notification. So for example, let's say I hold both the role of state editor and SPOC. I create a package and, as a state editor, and then I send it to the next step in the workflow, which is SPOC review. I will still receive a system notification since a new task was generated for the review. So even if you hold both roles, you will still need to take each step in the workflow. After opening the task to review and edit the package, the SPOC will be routed to a screen with a list of all RUs in the package. The SPOC can review any RU by selecting the RU name link from the table, which is highlighted in red in the image on this slide. It's important to note that the SPOC has editing abilities. Because of this, the SPOC will have to validate any RU they select, regardless if changes are made. The validation process is the same as what the state editor did to validate RUs in step two. The state point of contact will review and edit our use as needed. And once complete, they'll take action in the system to move the package forward to the state director for review and certification. As a note, if the state point of contact is not ready to send the package forward and has deemed it needs further revisions, they may instead take action to send the package back to the state editor. So at this point, the package is sent to the state director to review and certify. Once the package is forwarded to the state director, they will receive an email notification that the SPOC has passed the package on for their review. An example of this is pictured on the slide. In addition to an email, they will also have a task to review the package in their tasks tab. Again, as a reminder, if you hold multiple roles, you will still receive this system notification. When the state director opens the task, they will see a list of all reviewable units included in the package. This is the same screen that the SPOC saw during their review. However, the state director does not have the ability to edit any of the RUs. After completing their review, the state director takes action to certify and forward the submission package to the SPOC, who, as you recall, is the liaison between CMS and the state. And as a note, the state director also has the option to return the package to the SPOC for revisions. If the state director chooses to certify and forward the package, the SPOC will not be able to edit the RUs at that time. So far, we've discussed the SSA creating the state profile, the SE creating a submission package, the SPOC reviewing and editing the package, and the state director certifying the package. So let's move into our final step. The state point of contact is going to submit the package to CMS. Once the state director has certified the package, 
the SPOC will receive a notification via email, like the one pictured on this slide, to submit the package to CMS. In addition to the email, they will also have a task to submit the package in their Tasks tab. I'd like to reiterate that Mac Pro is built to communicate each time an update is made to a submission package. This means that if you are both the SPOC and State Director on a package, you will still receive this notification. All right, so this last step is simple. Now that the State Director has certified the package, the SPOC can select Take Action on Package, again from the Submission Package screen. From here, unless the package needs to be modified, the SPOC will submit the package to CMS for review. Once a package is submitted, the state may want to check the status frequently. The user may do so by locating the package under the Records tab in Mac Pro. So now that the state point of contact has submitted the package to CMS, they will be taken back to the Actions tab. And the package is now with CMS to review. All right, so let's pause here and do another knowledge check. I will read the questions and options out loud. So which role is not matched with the correct action? A, SPOC reviews and validates our use. B, state director sends package to CMS for approval. C, SPOC can return the package to the SE for revision or D, the state director certifies the package. So the correct answer is B, the state director. After the SPOC forwards the package to the state director to review and certify, the state director sends the package to the SPOC to send to CMS for approval. All right, so we're going to stop here for a quick question break. So once again, here is the full state workflow. As you can see, we reviewed the steps the state editor, state point of contact, and the state director take to submit the submission package to CMS. Next, we're going to review the clarification process. The Mac Pro Help Desk team welcomes your suggestions for our training and reference materials. Please contact us with your feedback and comments on this training or if you need other Mac Pro assistance. You may contact us via email at macpro underscore helpdesk at cms.hhs.gov or by phone at 301-547-4688.